So I'm in the studio, well, in your very own studio with Manon Gorgi, this fabulous studio that I've just had a little listening session in. Manon, you're obviously well known as a mixer, mastering engineer, Mac user or PC user? Oh, Mac user all the way. Mac user. Logic, Pro Tools? Pro Tools. Pro Tools. Hmm. So when you mix, you're obviously using audio as opposed to kind of lots VST. of VSTs. It's because you get given kind of the stems to make mixes. You were the mix engineer on Stormzy's breakthrough <clears throat> first album. Yeah, so the recording engineer and the mixer. I mix it with the producer, with Fraser T. Smith. So we both mix it together. That's yeah. still an amazing achievement. I think a lot of people would be quite surprised as well to see a kind of French woman in particular yeah. kind of behind, <laughs> behind the scenes. And in a way, you're very much behind the scenes because you're very humble about some of the achievements. There's actually four of these in the room. This is the only one she'll actually let me show. But you've got some as well for working with Dave. Yes. And Stormzy's second album, which I was uh, I did some engineering on. And London Grammar's second album, which I did the engineering on as well. Which are amazing. London Grammar, if you haven't listened to them. Ministry of Sounds, kind of golden child, aren't they? They're one of the kind of big breakthrough yeah. album acts for them. And was that engineering or mixing? Engineering. On that one. So now, would you call yourself an engineer or would you call yourself a mixer or a mastering engineer? What's your kind of area of... Um, chosen expertise i feel like i was a recording engineer for many years i feel like now i don't actually record that much anymore um i primarily mix and master so i would say more of a mixer now but it's all very linked and very sort of like it's the same i mean it's not the same but it's mixing is kind of like the, the sort of direct following after the recording so it's it's all very intertwined yeah. and it's the more creative option i guess in a sense isn't it it kind of gives you kind of a little bit more scope than an engineer to be able to really kind of interpret things yeah i mean um, the engineer can have a bit of like creativity as well it depends you know the, the genre and how much time you have as well to, to record but um i would say there's creativity in both but then yeah mixing is like you have to sort of look at like the very small detail and then the sort of overall picture as well. So, yeah, it's a, it's a slightly different headspace. And you think one is kind of a natural progression into the other? So if you start as a recording engineer, does it seem like the natural progression that you can then be the yeah. mix engineer? Or Definitely. I think when I was actually recording, I was kind of mixing as I was um, recording like more things because you have to mix it sort of together to get a, a clear picture of what's going on. So I think like mixing sort of started when when I was recording and I was starting to finalize mixes a lot more and then that sort of like naturally went into into that being being more of a mixer. So in a way you're quite involved in the whole artistic process through all the different roles you've played. Oh yeah. You know you've done everything from kind of recording the vocals to kind of dealing with the personalities and bringing, giving them confidence to being able to then smooth out and you know add finesse to the kind of finished mix and master. Mm -hmm. Yeah and, and and now now I think as well, mixing really flows into mastering as well. So I think a lot more engineers, I mean, when I was working with Dave, for example, I was engineering, mixing and mastering. Wow. So it's all that, you know, it's all kind of really flows into one. Um, so these are huge artists, man, aren't they? As well, <laughs> Do you think like once you work with somebody of that level, you then develop a niche in, in an area of the music industry that then people kind of start calling on you because they want that sound you know obviously everyone wants to kind of <laughs> have a huge album like somebody like Stormzy or Dave but do they then call on you because they want you to create this musical sonic masterpiece yeah I mean it's um you definitely get um recognition when you work with big names and I think artists want to have the same yeah this sort of like, okay who would be, be better suited to mix this or that and with what I've done before, I do get, you know, artists in that same lane coming mm -hmm. to me, but I try to keep it as varied as possible because I, I can do a lot of different genres. Okay, yeah, so we've been listening, you know, just today, you played me some really yeah. diverse, almost kind of cinemagraphic music. Yeah. I've also yeah. heard some much more pop music, some, you know, you're definitely like branch, yeah, 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 branching out into things that are certainly not always yeah. um, kind of choose pop, but I guess that gives you working on these amazing albums then gives you the opportunity to explore things that are potentially more niche. And I think the, I mean, to get to the sort of 
th those albums, it's it's a you know there's there's a lot of things that go into it. It's not only the the mix or the master. There's there's so much, you know. Obviously, the the artist it, uh, themselves, like the writing yeah. and the production, and there's a lot there's a lot that goes into it. In a way, you're like the link between the artist and the the record company, aren't you? And the management. In that sense, it's kind of like a little bit of a bridge. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. Of, okay, so we're in your studio, which is amazing. I don't think I've ever seen such a huge it's... screen. Oh, is it? It's not that big. No, it's not that big, actually. <laughs> so what we got here, what are your speakers? I see um, these amazing speakers you've got in the background. Um, so... Some kind of pretty heavy bass tones going on there. <laughs> so they are actually a new brand called Ex Machina. Exactly. And these are the Pulsars, which are the sort of slightly smaller model. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I demoed them. I wanted, I wanted to hear them before and I was actually blown away by them. And Literally yeah. blown away. There's, there's a lot of movement, isn't there, on these speakers <laughs> as well? It's in, in, in the kind of stuff I can kind of see the bass. When yeah, you're I mean, they're, at they're, high level. they are amazing. So I don't actually need a sub in the room. And because the room is mm. actually fairly small, a sub would have been too much but they they their frequency response is amazing on the low end and on the top end as well so i find that they have everything i want they have the sub they have the clarity the detail that i wanted so i mix on them all the time and then I'm, i check my mixes on all the systems and headphones as well and headphones yeah yeah but yeah they, they, they are my main sort of mixing monitors and what about mixing things on kind of Dolby Atmos, this new future that's opening up for mixing and mastering? I mean, I've, I've, been, I've been listening to, um, I actually went to a studio where they do Atmos mixes and they were mixing one of my mixes and I was actually blown away. I was, this, this is like such a cool way of doing things and like everything sort of moving around, but keeping the the qualities of the stereo mix but just do you think it's like a cinematic experience of music in oh, a sense definitely. it's like the equivalent isn't it of going to the cinema and just having a exactly. totally immersive exactly. experience i know sometimes it's called immersive audio sometimes it's called spatial audio i yeah. know on the new macbook you can kind of hear this kind of spatial kind of sense and in the new kind of ipod pros a lot of headphones as well kind of give the ability don't they, yeah to i think it's, it's, it's uh, the technology is sort of like the technology is catching up i think now but the is exactly it. Just being in, imagine being in the cinema and listening to albums, kind of thing. That's how it felt like, and it felt it sounded amazing. So I think it's yeah, it's a good, it's a great new technology. Do you think it's like the future of music and, and mixing? Do you think most artists are now going to want an equivalent <clears throat> mix in that format? I think it's becoming mandatory now, anyway. So that yeah. you have to deliver a stereo mix and then an Atmos or three sixty or immersive audio mix. And I wonder if is that giving more work, you know, to kind of engineers in a sense? Do you yeah. think it's like creating yeah. a bigger pool for people to kind of be able to definitely work on different mixes? And also for studios as well, because we've seen a lot of big studios sort of closing down over the years and because mm. obviously sessions are um, especially with lockdown, everyone's been kind of very I much mean, more isolated with, in their own with lockdown. But yeah. but over the years I think because a lot of music now is programmed based and there's a lot less sort of live recording everyone in the room. So it's all like one one play after the other and then... A lot yeah, of you like literally have one session in and yeah. then kind of tracking up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or computer based and then just vocals. So I think a lot of studio clothes and I think that Dolby Atmos, because you need quite a heavy studio setup with like lots of speakers mm. and a treated room, then that sort of keeps a lot of studios are, are having now an Atmos mixing room. That's a really interesting point. So that's kind of like saying it's reinvigorating the yeah. studio industry, the, yeah, yeah, which is kind of in a way being quite affected yeah. by so much. I mean, I, I really believe that it definitely is got the future, yeah. just because once you experience it, yeah, you don't kind of go, oh my so, God, I can't yeah. go back. It's like, I mean, I know we were talking about quadrophenia decades ago yeah. and surround yeah, yeah. sound was almost very much associated with film rather than mm -hmm. with music, music. Yeah, than music yeah. directly. So. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting step forward. So obviously I'm just looking here, you've got quite a lot of analog outboard gear as well. I presume you do a lot of mixing kind of in, in the box on your Mac. But what's anything here? Your favourite little bit of gear you'd like to just um, pick and choose today? Ooh. It's like picking your favourite child. Favourite child, yes. <laughs> and you must, so you must. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't have a lot of gear and 
it's just because most of the mind mixes are in in the box in Pro Tools. But I've got a UTA MPEQ one, which is a preamp and EQ. This little gold, the gold child here. The golden so, yes, child. Yes, we're really it. continuing the um, theme here. So that's a really great clean preamp with like a great EQ, very ver versatile and very flexible as well. You can really isolate frequencies that you want. I came across this when I was working with um, with Fraser T. Smith because he loved what he still loves, uh, UTA gear. So he had a lot of pre's and he had a desk as well, a custom made desk by Undertone Audio. So that's... Um, so it's the same, it's the same company. Yeah, um, so that's... About, yeah, UTA, that's the, the acronym that they use. Um, so you would basically record vocals so if i was recording vocals in here then i would i would use this and go with, bring into a compressor a tube tech cl one b which is a kind of classic in the lot of recording studios and like a you know really lovely smooth compressor really great tone quite transparent you can compress quite a lot without um you know sounding squashed or you know it's very a lovely compressor so then if I don't record with this, I can also like print my vocal. If I'm mixing, I just print my vocals through this sometimes. If I feel like the, the vocal needs it, then I'll just run it through the EQ and then the, the compressor and I print it back in, in Pro Tool. Um, so we've got an Apollo 6. It's just the, the interface. Soundtrack. Yeah. And then the SSL Fusion, which is a compressor that had and, and there's a bit of is there EQ as well? Yeah, there's a bit yeah. there's EQ. There's also drive. So is this essentially like having a SSL channel strip that you can kind of use? Yeah, but it's a bit it's a bit different than a, than the channel because obviously you've got you've got EQ, but you also have drive, so it does bring nice sort of saturation right. to to stuff. And you've got so it's like a little bit of a palette. More. Yeah, that's what I liked about this. Is that you've got like a few like a bit, a bit of color, a bit of EQ. Yeah. Things that you probably have like six different things plugged in your channel strip, but you can kind of access them all. Here. Yeah. So and and you also and have... that kind of warmth analog feel. Can you really tell the difference oh, from this between definitely. this and a... definitely? And then there's a bit of imager as well. You do like your imaging. Bit of widening on the mixes. As I I think I've been saying recently, as things are getting a lot more, especially in the kind of dance music, a lot wider. I think things are just generally a lot wider. Yeah. Nightclubs never wanted any dance music to be played. In anything but mono because obviously you stand away yeah. from one speaker miss mm -hmm. half the mix so um obviously checking your mono mixes is something yeah. that's still really important but um, which i, I do with the mix cube over there the, but... the little mix cube we'll look at that in a minute but yeah i still think it's things are just so much wider maybe more because of stereo imaging kind of plugins I mean, or yeah. equivalents yeah definitely. than they are so there's a bit of that there which is really great you just need a little bit of it which is really nice what's the green goblin there <laughs> which i called earlier it's like a green green ferrari or something i've never actually seen one of these but as soon as i was listening to some of your new mixes i could really really hear the kind of analog yeah. warmth and depth and roundness of the bases yeah i mean this is the the sort of latest um addition to um to the setup which is very minimal so the new child so the new the most recent uh, so the favorite child <laughs> this is called the apb8 and it's an analog processing box so your your signal comes out of your computer gets treated in analog in here and then comes back get converted back into digital uh, into your computer and it's all in real time so i'm running this live in my mix um so you've got a few plugins in there there's and this is eight tracks of real time yeah so eight yeah. mono or four stereo right and so you've got compressors you've got eqs you've got a mixer as well so you could put for example if you had you can have uh, eight or 16 so you could have uh maybe three stereo like channels maybe three, if you have like three uh back vocals you could put like the mixer each you could generally channel. choose those important components like the vocal yeah, you, or the kind of main yeah. body of the mix in that sense do you think this is almost like a a nice little amalgamation of digital and analog because you can use it so easily in the digital version world of logic or pro tools but also it's kind of direct and you're not having to constantly bounce things down it's for me it's been a bit of a revelation in my workflow to have that sound but it's a control like all plugin controlled so it's instant recall yeah and it's zero lat latency just sort of running live so in, you're hearing as, it you're hearing immediately it, the, immediately yeah. so so it's literally behaves like a, a regular plugin 
but you get that analog sound that richness and the the there's a, the few plugins that are uh, in there so like i was saying there's a few compressors eqs and there's, a, there's also a like a natural mixer so you could put like a channel strip on right on like a couple of tracks and then have the the mixer master on like a master fader i mean it's you could do like a lot of different things with it and so the actual interfaces are actually in pro tools yeah for this yeah. you do most of the control so, so you control within the door right okay okay so rather than, yeah so for me that's that's like a real progression so it's it's so clever and i think it works really well with the way i work because i I'm, i want to be able to mix i don't know maybe five tracks like go between five tracks in in the same day so i, I need to be able to sort of switch from one song to the other and don't have to worry about recalling so it'll things. just literally recall all of the settings it would that just you had yeah. within within a second. Yeah, There's nothing. You're not having all... to patch anything no. or doing. I actually don't no. see a patch way here at all anyway. No, in there terms isn't of, one. Yeah, you don't <laughs> don't need to even. Yeah, there isn't one. So for the the things that I need to record back in is just sort of um, wired directly underneath, and then right. Yeah, so you just got um, it all working. And then this is just Thunderbolt connection. So right. Um, so yeah. Thunderbolt direct. Yeah, direct into your computer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Sorry. seeing that a lot more recently, actually. A lot of people, in Ethernet, Thunderbolt, you know, kind of a lot yeah. of different ways yeah. to connect your, your, your digital like, yeah. analogue. They could have called it the Green Goblin. They could have literally been a great name. It's a great name. It would have been the great name. It's like I had a Planet Fat, you know, the little pink. I've still got it, the little pink. It's brilliant. It's just like Planet Fat was like the best name. Sorry, we're um, reminiscing about some analogue here. <laughs> <laughs> and the Emu. I had the Emu sampler and loads of oh, different yeah. things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which one did they um the Akai? Quite like analog. Yeah, APB, APB analog processing twice. box. Processing box. So we're talking a little bit about women in studios. It's kind of a little bit less of a rarity now. What do you think? Do you agree? Oh yeah, I agree. I think I've, I've seen the change from like a few years now in the last sort of five years. Because we're both members of a group called I mean we met each other before we joined the group, didn't we? Actually? Yeah. But um yeah, we we're both were like, Oh, are you in that group? called two percent rising which is when there was two percent female yeah. producers yeah and i think now that's maybe up five ten percent what do you think, think oh i don't kind of, i don't think it's that high. you don't think it's that high two no. and a half percent <laughs> i think three, now three it's, it's still like three percent now about three percent but i think it's nice to have a, a community of women like either writers or producers or mixers or engineers or djs and yeah, Just, it's, a, it's a real it's mix. Really, it's a real mix of, of people but with different backgrounds, live sound as well. Um, it's just nice to, you know, have a a platform where we can talk to each other. And Yeah, I, and I love the fact that there's lots, lots of different ages. So there's like, you know, yeah, women true. that are really starting out that ask for advice. And if either of us have the time, we always kind of try and kind of chip in and, and talk yeah. about our experiences. It's also quite a safe space for women to talk about. It is about a very safe space. Yeah. Experiences they've had i love it that there is in this group in particular there is no judgment and i think yeah sometimes in those pro audio communities or, or forums or something there can be quite a lot of judgment if you ask something that you yeah that you might look like a fool you if might, you're like yeah, asking oh what's the compression ratio or so how yeah, does this work sort of yeah 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 end up not asking anything because you're scared of looking stupid or or that you don't know what you, you know doing and i think yeah that having that community where you can just ask something and then really honestly yeah and i've seen some great replies yeah great replies. replies and there's even like a few researchers on there from universities who are kind of exploring mm -hmm. you know the growth or why are there less women or you know all mm -hmm. these kind of interesting perennial questions about women in music but for me one thing i found really interesting is actually the opportunities on there as well i see a lot now of job positions yep. being shared and yep. People needing an assistant, that kind of thing, and I think mm -hmm. that's something that the boys network really has. You know, like, oh, my mate so and so can help with that, and I, I mm -hmm. and I really think that two percent rising group is one of those kind of first steps towards. Yeah, I do think. I mean, it, it is they definitely doing a great job, and I think there's still some progress to be done. But I really think it's evo I think it's evolving. It's, it, it is definitely, but there, there is definitely. You know, there's not many Sylvia Masseys, are there? Exactly. People who've had a twenty thirty. Yeah, old, career yes. you know she was really very much pioneered you yes. know what i mean like the delia derbyshire's that kind of thing but mixing, you're still very much i think on your kind of own personal journey of yes, growth exactly, through exactly. audio and i think as a woman i think it's really important to kind of push that journey yeah as far as you can yeah and i've only been mixing for a couple of years so i feel like there's still a long sort of way to go but thank you for giving us time and letting us have a little brief look around in your studio all the projects 
unfortunately are um, all top secret and I've had a little secret listen but we can't possibly continue to those. But I hope you've enjoyed hearing a little bit about um, you know, another female producer and hopefully I'll be able to interview some more women and men. Maybe I should do one man, one woman each. Mm -hmm. Just be like, you know, the world is. Yeah, 50, yeah. 50. Yeah, 50, 50. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.